Yes, you did. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> We're live, Lawrence. Okay, good morning, everybody. It's November 11, and that is a very, very significant day, um, which is Veterans Day. And today we're going to talk, coincidentally, there's a long story, an interesting story about where we got to today. But before we do that, the, um, the uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> The Slaughterhouse of Failure. There you go. The Slaughterhouse of Failure is not, not in, in our, our destiny. Day. Thank you. The Slaughterhouse of Failure is not in our destiny. We sh shall persevere until we succeed. Thank you, Riley. So um, today, as I say, it's Veterans Day. And by pure faith, since we were talking with, with um, Dan, who just come back from a trip, and he was impressed with... Um, the tomb of the unknown soldier and what he saw there and so on. And so um, we decided to make this talk today about Veterans Day, the unknown soldier, and, and a little bit incorporated into these things. And before I mention that also, um, just so you know, the, unknown, the um, Veterans Day is actually based on Armistice Day which was in 1918 at the end of the First World War. And there's a very symbolic thing, which Dan will talk about in a second, which is the, there we go, um, which is about the timing, the month, the hour, and so on, 11, 11, 11. And in England, they celebrate Poppy Day. And in fact, the whole month of November, everybody wears poppies. And it is based on Armistice Day, based on the end of the First World War, remembering the, the, the fallen, remember all, remembering all the people who have died. And, you know, we can take it seriously and, and introspect and really think about it. <clears throat> or, or, excuse me, or we can just, you know, take it for granted, which is a very, very sad thing that does happen. So I won't go into any more, Dan. Go ahead. Yeah, no, as Lawrence said, I was in um, I was in D.C. last weekend. We took the kids down there for the first time. And I had been down to Arlington National Cemetery multiple times before and visited the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. But it's if you've never been there, it's 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 really inspiring. It's really, you know, make makes you think a lot about how how good we have it in this country and, you know, pay respects to those who have fought for our freedoms and 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 really allowed us to live the life that we're able to live here. Uh, in the northern hemisphere, uh, in North America. Um, so, so one of the things that I wanted to do was share about it. It's about a six or an eight minute video with you guys of the the sentinels who are tasked and they volunteer to do this to look over and protect the tomb of the unknown soldier. So we're going to show a short video on uh, six or eight minutes because I think it's it's really important for everybody to see the dedication. The desire, and we'll talk about how they how they uh, volunteer for this and what they need to go through to actually be able to to um, protect the tomb of the unknown soldier and and be sentinels there after this video. So let me share this with you, with you all, and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. Dan, are you recording? It's live on Facebook. Okay. okay. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? I am Sergeant Devon, the third of the Mr. State Department, the third of the Mr. State Department, this is the same thing with the government. This evening with the dignity of this ceremony, and the respect to thank everyone, remain silent and in the state. Thank you. 
Hey, this is. Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, no, that's the one with the right now. You have to be. Uh, want that the next one, I want that one to be Correct. Now, Trevor, okay. can Dan, we can't hear any sound. So again. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I don't know why you can't hear that then. Um, Did you set your Zoom uh, settings to allow the uh, audio to go through? Yeah, it was working yesterday. I'll try to fix it. <clears throat> hey, I can make a couple comments if you want. Yeah, go ahead. So I was drafted into the U.S. Army back at the tail end of Vietnam, and I was stationed at Fort Myer. So these honor guard were right across the parking lot from where I was stationed, from my barracks. And uh, I think you have to be six foot two and weigh a certain weight. You have to fit perfectly to what they want that person to represent. But uh, the Honor Guard is truly an amazing group of young men who are as dedicated as, uh, you know, even though they're just guarding a tomb, they were as dedicated as the guys at the time who were fighting in Vietnam. And uh, they all had, you know, that opportunity to go as well. But um, back when I was drafted, that was truly a time in our country when you didn't get a choice. My draft number was four and they were drafting up to 135. And so my life changed on that day. And uh, I had a World War II father who said, you do your duty. And, uh, and that's what you did. And um, to this day, I still feel that our country does need to protect itself. And as citizens, we need to seriously consider that we have to do that. I mean, it's not something we'd all love to just say you don't have to, but you have to protect your country in this world. It's still a very dangerous world. And so um, this Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is truly, you know, it's hollowed ground. It's where young men have died. I remember when, when I was there every day, the caissons, I was walking over to the general's house where I worked, and the caissons were right there loading up a coffin of another young boy from Vietnam who was going into Arlington Cemetery and this honor guard was going to accompany them all the way. And so that's just a little bit of a, a story on that time of year, you know, that time of period of history. Thank you, Jim. There's not really a whole lot to hear guys. So you're not really missing a lot. It's more, you know, just the precision um, and everything. That, that's really moving and the dedication that the, these guys have to protect this tomb of the unknown soldier. I don't you see. <clears throat>
So that's it. I mean, you guys can see how moving that is just from the video, but you know, when you're there in person, so I encourage everybody, if you get down to DC to make a trip there, you know, it's one of those places where you're, you know, your the hair stands up on the back of your neck and it almost brings tears to your eyes. And, you know, just, just thinking about the dedication and, and what this means. And these guys do this 24 hours a day. Um, they're known as the old guard. They're from the third U S infantry regiment. And they do this 24 hours a day. Like I said, for, for 365 days a year, um, they go out and do one hour shifts and there's multiple guys in the unit. Um, so they do this 24 hours when they're not, um, out marching, um, they are in their barracks, helping each other prepare their uniforms, clean their uniforms, polish their uniforms, making sure that they're, you know, 100% up to the standard for these, uh, for this regiment that, um, that protects the tomb. So, um, just a few things about the Sentinels, the, 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 the troops that are, um, protecting it are called sentinels um and they uh they're headquartered nearby in fort myers virginia um and they um actually volunteer to do this and and to volunteer to do this to actually become one of these sentinels they need to that first pass a training phase um they learn the history of arlington national cemetery and the grave locations of, of nearly 300 veterans they learn the guard change ceremony uh, the manual of arms and methods for keeping uh, uniforms and we weapons in immaculate condition. So then they need to pass multiple tests to earn the privilege of wearing the Silver Tomb Guard identification badge. First, they've tested on their manual of arms knowledge, um, their uniform preparation and walks. Then they take the badge test consisting of 100 randomly select selected questions from the 300 items memorized during training. Um, and they need to get at least 95% of those correct to actually earn a walk. Then once they earn a walk, uh, which is kind of the practice, then, then they're rated on, on those specific details. So um, if, you, if you, you're there and you watch, everything's based on a 21 step or 21 second cadence, and that pays homage to the 21 gun salute, which is the highest honor um, that you can receive in the military. So I actually, while we were sitting there watching this, you know, me being a maniac, I actually got my stop, stopwatch out and actually timed <laughs> everything that they did in this 21 step cadence. And it was per perfect, almost to the hundredth of a second. And it was just very impressive, the attention to detail that these guys do. And they go out there and they do that for a full hour straight, you know, and they're keeping that cadence. I mean, I, I did, I timed them for about 30 minutes uh, walking back and forth and the, the pauses that they took are a specific length of time. And it was just amazing um, the dedication and the, the detail um, that these guys um, are, are showing. So Lawrence. Yeah, thank you. So um, it's just a, something again that I just want to drive home. The I'll come back to that in a second, but what we're actually remembering is the, 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 the honoring those who served to defend our democratic freedoms of life. You know, this is something that, that is, I think, so important. Remembering, remembrance unites people of all faiths, cultures, backgrounds. But it's a personal thing, and I think we should really be grateful for where we are um, in the U.S. with our freedoms, with our freedoms of choice, with our freedoms to criticize, with our freedoms to be. And, and, and we take it for granted and we forget where we come from, all the people that have actually died to get the U.S. to where it is, to where we are today. And I think Veterans Day today is a very, very, very important day. And coincidentally, we're talking about a trip that, J that Dan made to the tomb of the unknown soldier. What an incredible coincidence. So, you know, we look at the people who are, who are doing this. As Dan said, you know, they, they do this, they selected from a very, very elite group of soldiers, very elite. And these are the cream of the cream who volunteered to do this. So think about the, the, the mission, the drive of serving a purpose 
that these people, these, these sentinels have to do this day in, day out, 365 days a year, no matter what, you know who's watching, <clears throat> you know, and this is where we we think, how, how, how do we get people like that? How do people come to be like that? How do people become so, so devoted, so, you know, act on their, on their beliefs? And this is so important because we all give lip service to everybody. You know, we, <clears throat> excuse me, we, we see a Marine or we see a soldier, we see a, a service person or we say, oh, thank you for your service. That, okay, that's nice, but what does it mean? So it means a lot, but it's got to mean a lot, not just a lip service. And so here is an example or are examples of people who are really, really dedicated to what they're doing. And in life, we've got to be dedicated in the same way to whatever we do, whether it's our families, um, you know, the well-being of our families, our, the, our businesses, our communities, our spirituality, all of these things have to come into it. And, and I think it's a good moment of reflection and also to look around and see who are we? Everybody on this call, think about it, introspect, you know, and, and, and take stock. Are we, are we dedicated in the right way to the right things with our ethical, moral values and principles? I don't want to be like a, on a pulpit here, but, but it's, it's a moment of reflection. Absolutely. You know, and Lawrence, when we were preparing for this call, you know, it was kind of like, I, I don't see how this ties in, you know, at first, you know, how are we going to talk about this? And it, it comes down to desire, right? And, and these soldiers volunteer to do this because it's prestigious and they believe in it. And so, you know, there's a great um, sentence in Thinking Grow Rich. You and you alone must decide whether or not the reward for how highly you are striving is worth the price you must pay for it in effort, right? So this is a very prestigious position to be held within the army and only 600 soldiers have been sentinels since the 1950s so it's a very elite group right that they can say that they're a part of and so for them it's worth it to go out there and march day and night and and um, be sentinels over the tomb of the unknown soldier um, whether it's raining whether it's sleeting whether it's hot you know they wear the same uniform whether it's 105 degrees out or whether it's you know, 40 degrees out. They may put on an overcoat when it's when it's colder out, um, but they're still doing it whether anybody is watching. And the true measure of somebody is what are you doing when nobody else is watching? And they do this night and day. So the Arlington closes at five or 5.30, right? So nobody's watching from 5.30 till 8.30 in the morning when it opens again, but they're still doing this with the same exact precision whether somebody's watching or not, what kind of person and how do you get those habits? How do you get that mindset, that mentality to continue to do something that requires so much uh, precision, whether somebody's watching you or, they're not, or not? So we, you know, we need to think about, you know, being with no disrespect to our veterans, but we must be sentinels of our business. Right. We need to be looking after our business with the same precision, with the same dedication, with the same respect for our time that our business deserves. Right. So I, I want everybody to think about that today and through the weekend. You know, think about our soldiers, think about our veterans, think about those who 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 perish that don't have a name, um, that don't have a, a, a place to rest. But also think about what they've done for us to allow us to have the freedom to start our own business. A lot of people don't have that same freedom in other countries or that opportunity. So we're very lucky to have that opportunity and have soldiers who are willing to put their life on the line for people that they don't know, meaning you and me and others, to give us that opportunity to live the lives that we have. So make the most of it. Don't take it for granted. It's a privilege. It's a total 100% privilege. 
And, <clears throat> you know, we, we, we pledge allegiance to the flag, we pledge allegiance to the country, but do we really, do we really follow through on that? Are we true to our values, our principles, our ethics, our morals? Are we true to all that? Or do we just take it for granted and just forget about it? So in our business, we've got to do the same thing. As Jan said, no disrespect to, 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 to anybody, but we've got to be of a standard to ourselves, which we can be exemplary, where we are leaders of our families and our businesses. And we've got to lead by example. And there's an example. These, these soldiers are these sentinels out there. I mean, they've been doing this. This, this whole thing started, I think, actually in 1928, I think, or somewhere like that, to actually have the unknown tomb of the unknown soldier. I stand to be corrected on that exact date. But, but to do this consistently, day and night, and with that exact precision, Dan is just, he said something that, that struck me. I mean, he actually took the time to go and measure the timing of what they were doing because it's all about the 11, 11, 11, 11th month of the 11th day and so on. This is incredible stuff. And there's a standard that's maintained and it's never fallen, night and day. So be proud, man. Be yeah, proud was, of you and be grateful. It was, a it was a great teaching opportunity for our kids about, you know, practice makes perfect. You know, they, they didn't just decide to be sentinels and come out and just start walking and, and doing it. Right. It, it, ha it happens because they practice this over and over and over to have this precision and not uh, have any flaws in what they're doing. Right. And, and for me, success or being dedicated to something or having that desire always comes down to sacrifice. You know, what are you willing to sacrifice for what you believe? What are you willing to sacrifice for the life that you want? What are you willing to sacrifice to help others be their best and bring out the best in them? For me, bringing out the best in others brings out the best in me. It helps me level up. When I played soccer in high school and college, I always wanted to play with people that were better than me, that were older than me, that, that had more experience than me, because it leveled me up. That's when I played my best, when I played with people that were better than me. So find people for your business that are better than you. And that's going to help you level up your game. How are we preparing ourselves and others to meet this challenge? You're muted, Lawrence. Vince just wrote and they commit to excellence. And, and I think <clears throat> I think these a day like today is a day of introspection. And it introspects in every aspect of what we are and who we are and what we're doing, bearing in mind where we've come from. And bear that in mind all the time, where we've come from. We've got everything on a platter. Go ahead, Dan. We've taken this business opportunity for granted. Yes. You know, Lawrence and I had a call with a, with a Marine yesterday. Yeah. And Lawrence, you know, did his, who are you? What do you want? You know, and he said, I want freedom. And Lawrence said, well, what does freedom mean to you? He said, it means being able to work from anywhere with my cell phone and a laptop. And I can do that from anywhere in the world as long as I have an internet and a cell phone connection. How often do we say that? And we take it for advantage, take it for granted. Not everybody has that opportunity. I have some business over in South Africa. You can't even talk to these people half the day because of load shedding. They can't get on the internet. They don't have cell service. It's very difficult to even communicate with people over there. We don't have that problem here. And those problems, they're different in every part of the world. And, and we, because we have people that are willing to fight for our freedoms, we live in a, you know, whether it be Canada or the U.S. or wherever you're from, we're able to live the lives that we're able to live because of them. So don't take it for granted. Make every moment matter. 
put everything you have into what you're doing and create the desire that you need to be successful and sacrifice what you need to sacrifice to get what you want and have the life that you want. And have gratitude for every single thing that you have. Be grateful. Anyway, I think we're on time here. Anybody got anything they want to add or subtract or comment? No. I'm going to change one thing on Dan. It, it's, it's practice makes permanent. There you go. No, that's better. I like that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Anyone else? I mean, look at Vince is a perfect example of desire and determination. Yeah. The last couple of weeks, he's been in a he's been in an office, training staff, helping them put orders in, helping them talk to patients. <clears throat> How many of us are doing that? How many of us are sacrificing our time when we could just train him online and say, "Go do your thing." You know, he's sacrificing some other things that he could potentially be doing to be there to be a sentinel of his business to make sure that it's running the way he wants it to run and that the orders are coming out and that we're helping patients become healthier and we're helping physicians create an ancillary revenue stream for their practice. There's a good motto, be a sentinel of your business. <clears throat> Why don't you adopt that, everybody? Let's adopt that, be a sentinel of our business. And what does a sentinel, sentinel mean? It means overseeing, it means so much more. You've just seen the, the sentinels of the unknown soldier. That's what it means. It means being pre precise, being being on time, being disciplined, being all of these things that you've just seen. Be a sentinel of your business. I love that. How many how many veterans do we have on this call? I know Jim, Vince, Vince, you're a veteran. Thank you very much. Two tours in Africa. All right. Awesome. Is that it? Is that Two, two folks. All right. Well, how oh, I am. Oh, Dr. Tears, you are as well. Thank you very much, sir. No, Ron. Oh, Deb that's Ron. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You sound like Dr. Tears there. <laughs> Ron and Deb Hatonaka's uh, bad dad as well. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I, I tell people every day that mm -hmm. one of my regrets in life is that I didn't serve. I wish I would have spent at least a couple of days in the service, but I had different aspirations at the time well, you learn the acronyms after so after the navy i learned it stands for never again volunteer yourself so <laughs> that's really good Vince. that's great i love that okay. all right well thanks everybody for being on the call thanks for your input and blessings to all of you and uh let's uh let's let's do it awesome Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Ron, for your service. Really appreciate it. Have a great weekend, Absolutely. everybody. Thank you. A hey, great call. Wonderful weekend. Happy holidays, everybody. This seems Thank to you, guys. That was a great, great meeting. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Great call. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Yep. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you.